wanted to bring you the science of it again this morning. You've probably seen those things running around your yard. They are lizards. And one of the, the, the kinds that's most commonly seen is really an invasive species. Alex Alisi is at the Orlando Science Center to explore more about brown anoles. Hello everyone and welcome to the science of it here at the Orlando Science Center. I'm here with Tori and Tori, who are we talking about today? Uh, this is my little friend Alex. He is a brown anole. So mm. have you ever seen these outside here in Florida? I think I have. Yeah, they're running all around outside. Yes, those of us who have lived in Florida, even just visiting, these little fellas are everywhere. Right. Um, but they're actually an invasive species. So okay. we have um, a native green anole, mm -hmm. but most of the time you're going to see a lot of these invasive brown anoles. And that's because they outcompete are native ones because look how large this lizard is right he's very muscular he's got this big long tail and did you see that beautiful dewlap that he was showing us before this little flap of skin under his neck oh wow um this doesn't harm him at all mm -hmm. to stretch it out a little bit he's got a tendon in there and they use those for threat display so okay. they're very territorial if there's a green anole or a brown anole in his territory around his bushes or his tree they will fiercely defend their territory oh, I've seen like stick it out yes they'll do that threat display um, and they'll do little push-ups they'll yeah. turn in circles they try to look very big and tough to scare off those other lizards or even another predator okay and where do they like to hang around uh, they like to hang out more terrestrial, so they like the leaves, the bushes, um, small shrubs. They don't really like the treetops that much. They like to hang out on the ground there. Okay. Um, and they like to eat crickets, roaches, even butterflies and moths. Really, oh, wow. any insect is not safe out there with these little brown anoles. Uh, they'll also use that beautiful dewlap um, to try to attract a mate as okay. well. He'll flash that out, try to look big and strong, <laughs> and see if he can impress that female. Very cool. So that's the brown anole. You said we also have a green anole with yes, us. Yes, yes. So I'll put Alex in his little dressing room. Oh, yeah, and I can already see the big size difference between the two of these guys. Yes, right? So Allie here, the green anole, is much smaller compared yeah. to our brown anole friend Alex. And see that little dewlap? Oh, yeah. Much smaller. Doesn't have those beautiful patterns. It's a lighter color as okay. well. So there's some small differences um, in the dewlap, but the main difference is the size mm -hmm. and that triangular head shape. Okay. And, of course, the color. So brown anoles are not going to change their color. They do not have chromatophores inside their skin, okay. like a chameleon that changes the pigment. Oh, yeah. These green anoles are not always green. Sometimes they're brown. It depends on the temperature um, and also their mood. If they're frightened or scared, they'll turn dark brown because they want to blend in with the shadows and try to... Um, blend in with like the darkness that's around right. them. Not so much changing colors to blend in with the leaves, it's really just to be not noticed. Right. Uh, so they change colors depending on their mood and their temperature, but they are gonna be eating the same thing. So and where do they hang around to? They like to be in the trees. Okay. So um, they have been kind of pushed out of their natural environment by those brown anoles. They were kind of, you know, trees and shrubs, but now they just mainly stay up in the trees because of those very territorial brown anoles. They're eating the exact same things that they yeah. are. So they outcompete our native animals. That's why invasive species are so detrimental to our habitat. They have a lot of negative impacts because they outcompete our native animals. So if you ever have any pets at home, especially exotic pets, we do not want to release those pets outside. We want to contact FWC and schedule a surrender. Okay, so if people want to learn more about the animals here you guys have at the Orlando Science Center, what can they do and where can they go? So our NatureWorks exhibit is under construction, but we do have other animal encounters going out throughout the day. For instance, we have Meet a Snake at 1215 in the Kidstown studio with our Burmese python, uh, another Betsy. invasive species. And then we have our Life with Animals showcase at 110 on level four. And of course, if you want to learn any more about our animals or the programming that we have to offer, you can visit our website at osc.org. All right, Tori, well, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us here at the Science Center for the science of it. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. So if you want to see what other cool stuff is happening at the Orlando Science Center, it is open every day from 10 until 5, and you can learn a lot about our animals for sure. Yeah.